So I guess it's time. Let's get started. And thanks, everyone, for coming to the talk. Originally, I had a little bit more buzzwords inside, but then I figured everyone is already tired. <laughs> this is the last day of the conference, so I replaced some of those with the pictures. Not cat pictures, but pictures. So um, who am I? I'm not completely new to this audience. I was formerly a release engineer of Mirantis OpenStack distribution in back times. Um, and uh, yeah, in times of OpenStack Mitaka and Liberty and something like that. I'm currently a senior principal engineer in Red Hat. And I work primarily on continuous integration for Red Hat Enterprise Linux and for CentOS Stream. I was also a member of a RHEL 9 bootstrap team, so we were uh, building the new major release of RHEL, which has been re just released last uh, month ago. And I'm also a member of Fedora Console, so if you are interested in any of these topics, feel free to reach out, and I absolutely love to talk about those. And I also... Oh, talk about CentOS Stream a lot, so there is one more recording which may be interesting for those who is involved in CentOS Stream and wants to know more about it. And uh, yeah, let's get started and let's talk about Linux distributions and how we develop them. I mean, of course, when you work with Linux distributions, especially with the Linux distributions with long-term support cycle, it is tempting to think about Linux distribution as like baseline which never changes and which you just put there and then you build all your fancy applications, services and infrastructures where some interesting development happens and like Linux distribution just sits there boring, nothing, nothing has to be done with it. But in fact, Linux distribution actually is being developed and if you're looking to build a project with a long-term, uh, long life, you probably need to be interested in how Linux distribution lifecycle works and uh, how uh, the process is organized around it. And when we look into Linux distribution de development, the first thing we know about Linux distribution is that it is continuous. And it was continuous before it became mainstream, and it is continuous now. And every update to Linux distribution is actually an atomic update of a package which uh, gets delivered for the update process. So in majority of Linux distributions, we never start a new release from something from scratch. We are just continuously built the new version based on the state of a previous one with incremental steps updating packages one by one. And yeah, if uh, the interesting feature of a Linux distribution which sets it apart from like regular application continuous integration is that um, Linux distribution has circular dependency on its own, uh, on itself. Like we build tools to build the update of a Linux distribution, a part of that Linux distribution, and we also need updates. This is a very interesting aspect of CI, which brings a lot of complexity in the process, but uh, I'm not going to actually deep dive into this area in this talk, so it's just a note for uh, generic audiences. And so uh, this uh, pictures, I will do them a lot, this is um, a representation of the continuous flow of updates in Fedora Linux as an example. So we have one continuous development branch which we call Fedora Rawhide. It's not just branch in the sources, it's also a, a binary artifacts which we build from the sources. These are actual binary RPM packages. And at a certain point, we create snapshot of this repository and these sources, and we create a branch, and this branch becomes a stable release of Fedora. Now, the interesting uh, part here is like every Linux distribution is continuous in this way, but there is a specific um, properties of Red Hat Enterprise Linux distribution from that point of view. So, RHEL is, uh, has major releases every like several years and minor releases every several months. And uh, the uh, question here, and, and like a RHEL in itself is not a complete uh, continuous development um, project because every major release of RHEL actually starts by inheriting Fedora code instead of continuing the previous RHEL version code. 
So when we prepare rel 9, we don't take rel 8 code and build on top of it, we take Fedora code and build rel 9 from there. So <coughs> the a creation of a Red Hat Enterprise Linux looks, uh, can be uh, expressed in uh, this way. So we have a certain stable version of uh, Fedora from which we take the, uh, the state and then there is a complicated bootstrap magic, how I call it, which then uh, leads to appearance of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux release and the CentOS Linux release, which is a rest rebuild of uh, RHEL. <laughs> And the, uh, this uh, kind of contradicts with the pr previous um, attempt to ir represent Linux distribution as a continuous thing. And this is exactly the area which we try to address with uh, CentOS Stream and with RHEL 9 change. We wanted to bridge this gap and to make it more clear how exactly uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux releases start and to make it more predictable and more understandable and more open as a process so that people can contribute to it, people can make plans about it, people can reason of what Red Hat Enterprise Linux will be in the next major version. This also creates possibility to, uh, like bridging this gap would also uh, create possibility to plan ahead and to request certain changes in, in RHEL while we're doing that. So uh, to bridge this gap, we actually introduced two things. The center stream was just one of them, but the first thing we, we added was Fedora ELN. <clears throat> and you may be not seeing it exactly at the first moment, but Fedora ELN is the additional line which I added to this Fedora Rohai development branch. So Fedora ELN is actually a rebuild of Fedora Rohai sources in the environment which resembles Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So we use compiler flags, uh, we use options, we use macro, which are uh, natural for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but we take Fedora or Hide code and, build, and continuously build it into that environment. So this Fedora ELN creates a starting point for the Enterprise Linux development process. And then when we, once we have the Fedora ELN project, we added this into a stream, which actually connects the dots here. And uh, sent to a stream starts from a certain snapshot of a Fedora ELN at the moment of a branching of Fedora stable release. And then uh, it continuously takes updates in, uh, which lead us to the actual Red Hat Enterprise Linux release. So um, with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9, we introduced actually three different changes. And <laughs> unfortunately, when uh, news came about CentOS Stream, most of the um, conversations over the last year were focused on only one part of this change, which is uh, I marked by the number three here. This is the change of CentOS Stream and Red Hat Enterprise Linux relations post-release. But I want to highlight in this talk that there were like two more things which we added and which may be more interesting for people who were not targeting uh, CentOS or RHEL as a, just a platform to put your production workloads on. But if you consider a platform to which you uh, develop your own services or applications and you need to plan for future developments of those, these are the things which you might be want to be aware of and you might need to consider uh, using them for your development purposes. So again, Fedora ELN is a subset of Fedora Rawhide packages built into the enterprise-like build route. Currently, it's a like playground to propose and trust uh, and try the most controversial changes in RHEL. So what we do, for example, right now, we, we talk about uh, bumping the CPU baseline for the entire distribution, which means uh, getting rid of support for older Intel CPUs and uh, setting uh, the expectations for the CPU baseline to uh, have AVX2 instructions. I don't know what this exactly means, but this is a big conversation which we're having right now. And it's not yet decided whether this will be applicable for the next version of RHEL, whether it's, it fits in Fedora. 
But this is the kind of conversation which we are having in Fedora ELN right now. And this is where you can already participate and provide feedback and say like, three, three years from now, are you going to have CPU with this Intel instruction supported? I, do you want them to be supported? What's your interest in this? And what you want RHEL to be uh, with respect to this feature? And this is just an example. So Fedora ELN is the place where we have a can have the conversations like this. Fedora ELN also is a place where we choose which content uh, will be in the next uh, release. So um, like Fedora Linux distribution has more than 20,000 packages. Uh, Enterprise Linux, of course, has a smaller footprint. We just cannot support all 20,000 packages on the same level. So we need to choose a minimal subset, which is good enough for running enterprise workloads. So currently, for example, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is 2,000, slightly more than 2,000 packages, and not 20,000 as in Fedora. And the choice of these packages it depends on the choices we do for Fedora ELN. So if you want a specific tool enabled in a next RHEL major release, this is the place where you can come talk about it. <clears throat> so the second part, which I marked here, is it, it is also a new thing, and it also went almost completely unnoticed. And this is what I could call pre-release development of RHEL, so of major release of RHEL. Previously, when we prepared RHEL major release, uh, you will only see it once it is ready. Uh, when it's launched, we had, had a beta program. There were some ways for partners to get early access to certain preview of a RHEL major release, but it was harder and uh, not as open as we wanted it to be. So now with uh, Center Stream, the entire flow from Fedora to Red Hat Enterprise Linux is done in the open. Sorry, I just <coughs> need to keep my voice. Does anyone have any questions so far? Okay, all good. So with uh, this open development, we can uh, show you the exact development process and development decisions done by RHEL engineers when they adopting Fedora code for RHEL. This also provides you a place to integrate early with upcoming RHEL release. So you can start testing and adapting your own applications and services to the next major release much earlier than the launch of the release itself. As a direct benefit of this approach, for example, I can name the early start of EPL repo. Like normally, uh, EPL packages appear months after the launch of RHEL release because the community needs time to prepare them, people need to figure out how to build the new environment and so on. Uh, this year, this release, EPL repo has been opened before the launch of RHEL 9, so we were ready with EPL packages uh, on the day one of the uh, RHEL life cycle. So this moves a lot of this preparational work before the launch of RHEL rather than to the zero release of RHEL first year of RHEL, which kind of extends your life cycle support time because you don't need to wait a year before adopting a new version. You can jump right in and all everything is going to be ready there. Of course, like uh, this thing is new, so not everyone adopting it yet, and we need to talk more about it. I hope that more services, products, and partners would be operating in this mode. This means everyone will be ready on day one rather than wait for two years before jumping in. <clears throat> and yeah, the third one is most beloved and most controversial topic on <laughs> CentOS Stream change is uh, what exactly happened with uh, between CentOS Linux and CentOS Stream and uh, how it works now as opposed to how it worked before. So on this diagram, you can see the minor releases of RHEL as they are released. So when we create like major version of RHEL, 
uh, we start to create point releases, and each point release of RHEL has a certain period of time when it gets updates within that minor release uh, branch. <clears throat> Uh, CentOS Linux, uh, as it was previously built, it tracks a certain minor release for some amount of time, but the moment there is a new minor release available, CentOS Linux would jump to that new minor release and get updates to, to that version. So if you were using CentOS, uh, CentOS Linux, you would do these uh, like steps in your updates flow you're supposed to do these steps and your updates flow. Not everyone does it, of course, but that was the expectation. Now, the center stream on this diagram is this kind of continuous line which does just continuously go through uh, the updates of the next minor release, and there are no steps inside of it. You just keep going. You can uh, create your own steps if you like. That's uh, the freedom of the center stream approach that you uh, can create your personal uh, schedule of snapshots between which uh, you want to move and you can create your own delivery process around this. But generally CentOS stream just keeps going. And the important highlight here is that, again, the controversial topic, topic of ABI compatibility so that ABI compatibility covers all these updates. So um, CentOS stream cannot at a certain point run far away uh, outside of the ABI compatibility uh, promise and then return back to it for the real minor release. This is not how it works. Every update which we do, every atomic update which we do when we do a real development actually goes within these policy guidelines and within the limits of a compatibility promise and as, as it is set for any rel update. So these are like three major changes which we en enabled in the rel 9 workflow and we are going to uh, continue using the same approach for rel 10. So since we're released rel 9 right now, the Fedora ELN is already looking for rel 10. Uh, the CentOS Stream 10 has not yet appeared, but it will in the same way at a certain point once we branch the relevant Fedora version, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux will appear as a direct consequence of that. And uh, yeah, uh, the more detailed slide here is the, uh, describes the actual path of every update in the century stream. So as we're doing the, as I shown on this slide, center stream is actually the development branch of RHEL itself. It is not developed separately. It is not developed before RHEL. It is not developed outside of RHEL. The exact source code which you commit to the uh, sources of the center stream, it is the code which you commit to the sources of RHEL because it are, these are the same sources. We literally have a service which synchronizes git history of a center stream disk git to git history of rel disk git, preserving the git sha of every commit. So how the contribution works in the center stream way and where rel is in this picture. So you start from merge request to center stream GitLab where resources are. This merge request check, uh, runs uh, uh, goes through a series of checks, which is now managed by Zool CI, which was a really new development, and I'm, uh, the Zool, uh, OpenStack, our, our DO team actually uh, helped a lot to set up Zool CI here. So oh, this merge request uh, passes pass the check, and they get merged to the sources, and then we have a system which, uh, to, uh, and then the build is triggered in the build system, which is called Center Stream Koji. And the build goes in the gate tag on the system. Gate tag is like a label you put on a build that, uh, or folder to which you put the build in. And once the build appear there, we trigger the package uh, checks, which are uh, like tests which use this binary RPM package uh, in these scenarios. And then if these uh, checks pass, then we move uh, uh, the build to the pending tag 
And this is where this circle of dependency uh, plays the role. The spending tag becomes the build environment for the next set of uh, updates. So uh, this is the environment which is used by next series of merge requests and um, artifacts to, to, be, to be built. And then there is a certain uh, like periodic uh, job to create composers, which is uh, like repositories and images, the snapshot of the current state of the distribution which then also goes through compose checks and then gets published to mirrors. And so, as I said, like center stream is rel in the sense that sources of a center stream and sources of rel development branch, it's exactly the same thing. But we go also one step uh, further, the uh, gating process of a center stream, the package level gating of a center stream, it go, it goes in direct sync with gating process of a rel package. So this is a zoom in into that picture. We actually have a infrastructure which ensures that CentOS package update goes into the CentOS pending tag and gets promoted through the pipeline only in sync with rel package which gets promoted through the rel pipeline steps. So when we, when we test the package, we, te we run tests for rel package and only those tests for rel package show us the passing test result the CentOS package gets moved to uh, the next step. So this quality assurance uh, happens in synchronously between CentOS stream and rel packages. And the uh, things diverge at the level of the compose checks. So this is where uh, we say rel has its own compose mechanics and rel has its own nightly builds and the verification of them. And RHEL has its own like release strategy with minor releases and, uh, and, and things like that. While CentOS project has uh, just a publication schedule for this uh, repository and images and applies its own compose checks. And uh, we discussed this just like in the morning, uh, how we can make CentOS 3 more suitable for as a development platform for layered projects and products. And this is a where um, you have three possibilities to join and um, it, uh, make sure that CentOS Stream actually solves your tasks and your problems. So you can uh, join as a third party CI for merge request checks. You can join as a CI for package level checks. And you can join as a part of the CentOS community to the comp uh, with your CI for compose level checks. And uh, we are actually open to any suggestions on how, uh, which scenarios are worth being added into this environment. And for example, like, yeah, if OpenStack CI uses CentOS Stream as a, one of the base systems, it makes a lot of sense to put OpenStack sanity checks in one of those places, maybe on package level, maybe on compose level, maybe on all levels. This uh, infrastructure is open, and yeah, OpenStack is one use case, but we're open to any kind of uh, uh, applications, and we're really looking into the third-party CI concept in the same level like OpenStack does. So, for example, if your use case is very special, you have a hardware lab which no one else in the world has, and you want to ensure that Center Stream works on that, you can contribute, we don't need to ac the access to your hardware lab, but you can set up your tests in a way that you contribute the test results and debug logs, and then we might have a discussion about this, but we can actually use these tests to gate the center stream updates. So um, this is actually uh, the conclusion slide of this talk. So again, what we uh, created with the center stream and with rel nine changes with Fedora ELM, we uh, uh, removed this bootstrap magic thing, which was hidden uh, inside the rel engineering and never been uh, visible for any developer. Uh, so we created continuous path uh, for all uh, rel updates. So uh, in, in center stream, uh, we, you can track the update path all the way to Fedora and, and uh, see how it happened. We created it all in the open, so the entire process, the entire development process is completely open, and the way how um, Red Hat developers interact with Red uh, RHEL code 
is the GitLab, is what I showed in this picture. So when RHEL dev engineers create any update to RHEL, they, they go through this process, and you as a contributor can use all the same tools and go through the same process uh, the same time. And we created a flexibility, which means like you still have your post-release RHEL the usual way, uh, but you also have this pre-release development uh, part and you have the Fedora ELN part. So depending on the uh, like the planning horizon you have, depending on the uh, level of features you want to see implemented in the base platform, you can actually choose at which level you would like to join the development process or like provide feedback on development process, provide the feedback on the way this is whole thing is going. You can participate in Fedora ELN for like groundbreaking changes which like change the way Linux is used in the world, or you can uh, watch uh, in uh, the pre-release development through the center stream and start integrating like three months before to ensure that your application actually works with the future release. And uh, it is really important to un uh, uh, understand the full value of this pre-release integration because if you only start adjusting your application to Center Stream or Red Hat Enterprise Linux post-release, uh, any feature you would request would uh, be subject to the EBI compatibility promise. So we would not be able to change something which would break the EBI compatibility for that feature, even if this feature is definitely something you must have for your application to function, it will be too late. So we would really encourage everyone to start integrating slightly earlier than that Well, there is still possibility to like update a certain library to a new version or roll back it to a, new, to a certain version which would be really important to you. And we would really want to know that earlier than after release. And so this is the content of a talk and just as a reminder, send to stream in 10 and rel 10 has already been started and we are already planning future development in Fedora ELN right now and everyone is invited. So thank you. Any questions? Okay, everyone understood everything? No questions? We're all excited, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you for coming. Next week, there is a Centers Dojo. It's a virtual event. If you have more questions, if you want to meet the community, come join. It's open. It's free. Thanks. Thanks.